In today's video, we're gonna talk about the differences in between having 1 times 16 gigabytes, 2 times 8 gigabytes, or 4 times 4 gigabytes RAM. And not only in terms of actual performance, but also about why that difference in performance may happen. First thing we need to consider is single channel versus dual channel versus quad channel. The more RAM channels you have, the better the performance should be. But how does it work? Most likely not exactly as you think. Technically, when you are using only one RAM stick, you will be limited to single channel, which means that you will have half the bandwidth you would have with two RAM sticks, dual channel, and one fourth of the bandwidth you would have with four RAM sticks, quad channel. By this logic, it would be always better to have four RAM sticks, right? Well, not really, because there are some variables. First of all, the number of RAM sticks aren't always connected to the number of memory channels because the CPU has to support those same memory channels. The current mainstream CPUs from AMD and Intel, like the Ryzen 5 5600X used in this video, only support dual channel, meaning that even if you use 4 RAM sticks with those CPUs, you will still be limited to dual channel. You would just have 2 RAM sticks for each channel. The only CPUs that support quad channel are the AGDT ones like the Intel Xeons and the AMD Threadrippers with the AMD Epic and higher end Xeon supporting octet channel. How cool is that? But if 4 RAM sticks are still dual channel for the vast majority of users, what's the point of having 4 RAM sticks besides capacity? Well, this leads me to the second thing we need to consider. Single rank versus dual rank. The rank is applied to each RAM stick individually and this time it won't be limited by the CPU you have, which is nice. Single rank is when a RAM stick has 64-bit bus in one side only, while dual rank is when a RAM stick has 64-bit bus in each side, leading to a total of 128. But the actual performance difference in between single and dual rank is due to bank interleaving. This because since dual rank sticks have memory chips on both sides and have double the bus width, the CPU can access one side while the other refreshes itself, reducing the memory response times, usually helping in CPU intensive applications. If you want to know, most of the R4 16GB sticks have memory chips on both sides and most of them are dual rank, while the 8 and 4GB ones are single rank. I could tell you a bit more, but I guess I'll leave it to the end of the video. Hello guys, this is Plays. I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today, we have a re-released video. And I'm not saying repost because it isn't a repost, because reposting would be posting the same actual video. And in this case, I'm actually releasing the same data in terms of benchmarks, but with a completely new design in terms of data, with a new intro and conclusion, and also that pre-intro explaining things that you saw in the beginning of the video, and that wasn't presented in the video that I released before. And there are two reasons why I'm actually re-releasing the video I made three months ago of one times 16 gigabytes versus two times 8 gigabytes versus four times four gigabytes. And the first reason is because I wanted to have better and more info like I did in the beginning of the video for example. And the second reason is because YouTube's algorithm keeps insisting in showing the 2020 version video to the people instead of showing the 2022 version that I made three months ago, okay? So I'm basically remaking completely the 2022 video, making it even better so that people don't feel the need to actually watch the, 20, the 2020 version and go directly to the 2022 version, which is a much more complete experience. That's what I wanted to do. And well, without any further delays, let's go to the benchmarks.
today's first game is Assassin's Creed Valhalla using Ultra settings. This is the first game and already with some messy results. Somehow, I really don't know why, at 1080p this game shows a decrease in performance when running 4x4GB over the 16GB single channel, which should never happen taking in consideration that it should be at least as fast as the 2x8 configuration. Not that it performs bad, just that it isn't performing as it should. Overall, even the single channel module can bring decent results in this game, first because it is dual rank and second because this game is mostly GPU bottlenecked here, even at 130 FPS. In Cyberpunk 2077, using ultra settings in the inbuilt benchmark, we have the results we should have had before, with 1440p and 4K resolutions having the same results with all configurations, due to the GPU bottleneck of course, and with the 1080p results showing a 10fps increase in the 1% lows, which is quite good. This happens because this is the only scenario where we push over 120 average FPS, leading to a more CPU and RAM driven experience. The higher you go in terms of FPS, the bigger the difference will be in between the single channel and the dual channel configurations. Forza Horizon 5 is a very well optimized title, but that doesn't mean that it won't be affected by CPU or RAM. Actually, there are two things that this game loves, RAM and VRAM. We can see that up to 130 average FPS, we see almost no performance decrease by using a single channel configuration, with only a slight decrease of 3 FPS in the 1% lows, and it is only at 1080p and around 150 average FPS that the differences start appearing, and the single channel configuration is quite slower, but not in terms of averages, actually in terms of 1% lows, with a difference of 9 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn is another game that is more CPU and RAM dependent than most people think, at least if you want to achieve those high FPS numbers. As for the results, the single channel configuration is once again a bit slower, but now consistently across all resolutions tested, but with the difference getting smaller as the resolution goes up, obviously. Still, I was very impressed about what this single channel configuration could do in this game with Horizon 5 5600X. Very nice. Moving to the more CPU dependent games, we have PUBG, and not CPU heavy per se, just really CPU dependent if you try to push those high FPS numbers. This is the first game where the 4x4GB configuration delivers a bit more performance than the 2x16GB one, with the 1080p results showing once again the single channel configuration being around 10 FPS below in the 1% lows. Still, if you play this game at 160 average FPS or less and you have a CPU close to the 5600X in terms of performance, you won't have any noticeable performance decreases, even with a single channel configuration. And since we have PUBG, we needed to include Fortnite as well, otherwise the Fortnite stands would be mad at me. Now, a thing that we can see here is that once again at 1440p and 1440p ultra-wide, the difference is basically null since we run into a GPU bottleneck. And even at 1080p and over 160 average FPS, the performance difference can be considered as margin of error, since Fortnite's replay feature is a bit messy when things get CPU-sided. But anyways, 4x4GB seems to take the lead here. In Call of Duty Warzone, we're using the maximum available settings, including ray tracing. This was tested in the orientation mission, as it is very hard to replicate results properly in any other situation. Now, at 1080p and around 200 average FPS, the results are all within the margin of error, with only a slight decrease in the 1% lows when using the single channel configuration, but nothing you would notice when gaming. In this scenario, we run mostly into a GPU bottleneck, something that won't happen in a normal gameplay even with a CPU such as the 5600X, at least if you're aiming for over 100 FPS all the time. Meaning that in a normal gameplay situation, the difference in between these configurations may be higher, and I would definitely pick the 2x8GB or the 4x4GB kits, since these are the safeguards for all situations. Now we have Lost Ark, a game still using the X11 and Unreal Engine 3, but also a game that looks very good. 
The test was done outside the city killing some monsters, but since this is a gameplay the margin of error is also bigger. And you can also ignore the 1% lows here because I unlocked the frame rates in this game and that means the 1% lows are a bit unstable. Doesn't mean the game isn't smooth, just that the results may jump a bit back and forward. In terms of averages, at 1080p we have a clear disadvantage when using single channel configuration, one that costs us around 30 average FPS when comparing to the 4x4GB one. And even at 1440p, although by a smaller difference, the single channel configuration is still a limiting factor. At 4K, we somehow had the big stutter with the 2x8 configuration, but it was just that, a single stutter. CSGO always surprises me every day like a big gift box, but always filled with cheaters, people better than me and kids usually calling me a piece of shit. As for the results, CSGO seems to not care... <laughs> For the results, CSGO seems to not care at all if you have single, dual, quad, octa or a bazillion memory channels. Maybe because it uses a very old game engine, but since it is sensitive to frequency and timings, I personally thought it would also be sensitive to this as well. But it isn't. And this because percentage wise, almost all results here are within the margin of error. This because we're running at least over 440 average FPS. Finally, to the last game, which is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This game is actually one of the best CPU and RAM benchmarks due to its magnificent stability in terms of results. At 1080p and 1440p where we are in GPU bottleneck, the differences can be seen, with the single channel configuration being considerably slower than the other dual channel ones, delivering way less FPS both in averages and 1% lows. Most people won't be running this game at over 100 FPS and for those who don't, even single channel configurations will deliver decent results. But sincerely, I see no point in getting 1x16GB unless your motherboard only has 2 RAM slots and you want to later upgrade to 32GB. Overall, the 4x4GB configuration takes the performance crown here and well, let's move to the conclusion I guess. Yeah. So guys, concluding, single channel versus dual channel 2 times 8 gigabytes versus dual channel with dual rank being 4 times 4 gigabytes. In this test you have the single channel module which is dual rank, it's a 16 gigabyte single, single RAM stick but it is dual rank so it, it is quite better than the single rank version of it. Then you have the 2 times 8 gigabytes single channel which is the most common RAM configuration that, have, that almost everyone has. And then we have the 4 times 4 gigabytes, which is not common, but we have 4 sticks running with single rank. When you have 4 sticks running with single rank, they will actually run as 2 sticks dual rank. So 4 times 4 gigabytes should technically be faster than having 2 times 8 gigabytes due to that. But there are upsides and downsides. The upside, for example, is that you have more performance. But there are actually more downsides than upsides of having uh, these 4 4 gigabyte RAM sticks. First of all, it's 2022, nobody uses 4 gigabyte RAM sticks anymore. <laughs> Unless you have a really, really low end system, because otherwise it's 2022. The, the RAM sticks are a minimum of 8 gigabytes and the actual minimum is 2 times 8 gigabytes of RAM, okay? And if you have 4 times 4 gigabytes, you'll have all your motherboard slots filled with RAM and you can't actually upgrade in the future. Because if you want to upgrade, you will actually have to sell or at least remove your previous RAM sticks in order to put the new ones that you bought and it's basically uh, thrown away money or just time spent in actually selling the, the RAM kit you have now and so on. It's, well, it's not optimal in any scenario. So basically if you have, let's say, four sticks of RAM with eight gigabytes, so 32 gigabytes, eight uh, X4, then it will be worth it, no doubts. But if you don't have those, well, I wouldn't advise them because four gigabytes sticks, nobody uses them in 2022. But well, throwing the capacity point away, like I told you, there are more downsides than upsides. And the first downside is actually if you have 2 times 16 gigabytes, for example, the, um, the memory sticks are most likely to be dual rank. And if you have 4 times 8 gigabytes, there are 4 sticks of RAM that are single rank and they will be read as 2 dual rank. 
So overall it is better to have the 2 dual rank already 2 times 16 than 4 times 80. Why? Because you can upgrade later and add more capacity and also because 2 ram sticks are actually easier to overclock than 4 ram sticks. The more sticks you have on each channel, in this case you'll have, if you have 4 ram sticks you'll have 2 ram sticks per channel, the more ram sticks per channel you have the harder it will be to overclock. So if you have just 1 ram stick per channel, so 2 ram sticks, it will be way easier to overclock and your overall performance once overclocking, uh, overclocking for example overclocking frequency, uh, tightening the timings, well your overall performance will just be better than having the 4 ram sticks that most likely won't overclock as well. So basically having 4 ram sticks is a limiting factor in terms, uh, in terms of capacity because you can't upgrade later uh, or at least you have to remove some sticks and also in terms of overclocking because it will just be much heavier on the CPU IMC integrated memory controller uh, while the two RAM sticks will be way easier to overclock. So basically just get dual channel two times eight gigabytes if you want 16 gigabytes or two times 16 gigab gigabytes if you want uh, those 32 gigabytes. That's my opinion. And also in terms of performance, as, as you saw in the video, the performance difference does not differ much even with the 6800 and at 1080p. You have some FPS differences at 1080p, but I mean, in most scenarios, we are over 200 FPS. So for most people, that won't even matter. And for most people will actually have uh, CPUs at least in the level of the 3600, the Ryzen 3600 or the 5600X that are at very good pricing right now, they have a very good pricing and most people are actually buying those CPUs and the next generation ones will be even faster. So the faster the CPU, the less RAM dependent it will be. If you go for example for the Ryzen 5 1600, the Ryzen 5 2600, they will be way more RAM dependent because they are slower. The Ryzen 5 3600 is not much RAM dependent and the Ryzen 5 5600X is even less RAM dependent as you can see in this video I made with several RAM frequencies tested, okay? So that's my opinion for nowadays, well, single channel, dual channel or quad channel, in this case just four RAM sticks dual channel, you'll be fine with any of these configurations but the optimal scenario is to have two times eight gigabytes or if you can two times 16 gigabytes. That's my advice. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot and see you in the next one. Ciao.